It's exactly 10 years since the invasion of Afghanistan began. Still, the Taliban is not defeated and the Afghan president, Hamid Karzai, and some in Washington are increasingly blaming neighboring Pakistan for fueling an upsurge in violence. My guest today on Hard Talk is Afghanistan's former top spy, Amrullah Saleh. He doesn't want talks but tougher action against the Taliban and Pakistan. But won't that simply move the Afghan conflict into a wider and more dangerous phase? Amrullah Saleh, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Why do you think that President Karzai and the international community, the West, are wrong to try to talk to moderate elements of the Taliban? Well, the, the problem is there is no such thing as moderate uh, elements in the Taliban. The leadership of the Taliban and their philosophy are not very much different from Al-Qaeda. Reintegration is a different thing. You reintegrate the expendable part of the Taliban, the fighters, the rural boys who have joined them. But at the leadership level, they are, uh, they are all hardliners. So as your former position until June last year as head of the National Directorate of Security in the Afghan Intelligence Agency, did you get to know every single member of the Taliban? Do you know things that other people don't know that makes you say what you say, that there are no moderate elements? Uh, it will be wrong to say uh, we know every single element of the Taliban, but Taliban as an organization at the very top, those who matter, uh, they are hardliners and they are not coincidentally allies of Al-Qaeda. It's based on, a, uh, based on, on, on ideology and so uh, this thing moderates in the Taliban is largely uh, an invention, which in reality does not exist. An invention by who? Well, largely by this new narrative created in the West to justify reduction of the troops or justify benign outreach to the Taliban. But in October 2010, President Karzai, he's not a member of the West, is he, launched his High Council for Peace to engage in talks with the Taliban. And in fact, he said on American TV that talks had been going on for some time. So your president is wrong. Our president is wrong. I have been warning our government that reaching out to the Taliban for a position of weakness is not uh, going to work. And I'm increasingly proven right. You saw uh, Professor Rabani was murdered uh, by the Taliban. And uh, now that High Peace Council entity has to refresh its mandate. It is dead. But it's not a position of weakness, you say, on the part of the government. But the Taliban have been weakened, haven't they? Well, after the surge, which literally means escalation of the fighting into areas where the Afghan government and coalition forces were weak, we did not uh, uh, solve the fundamental problem, which is the <clears throat> existence of sanctuaries in Pakistan and the support infrastructure which Pakistanis have created for I'll the Taliban. I'll come to Pakistan in a moment, but let's just deal with the Taliban yeah. as they exist yeah. in Afghanistan. You say your president was wrong or is wrong to try to talk to the Taliban. You've told him that, have you, many times? Sure. That's why I resigned. I am not anti-peace. I am anti-destroying the fortress of Afghan pluralism for the sake of appeasing the Taliban. Is that the main reason why you resigned? Because in June 2010, when you said after six years I'm stepping down, there are a hundred reasons you sure. said why that, I'm leaving this post. That was the main one, was it? Or do you want to give us some of the others? One of the principal reasons. I tried to bring a change or influence change from within the system. It was no longer possible. The affairs had become so much personalistic and President Karzai was not open to advice or information. So therefore it was uh, morally justified to resign. But your main area of disagreement was on this, that on President this. Karzai thinks it's right to engage with moderate elements of the Taliban and you say no. 
No, you cannot uh, work in a system which fluctuates in its views and policies and has no consistency. One day you are uh, killing the Taliban as enemies of Afghanistan, the next day without relying on, on uh, accurate information, you call them sons of the soil and, and, and uh, my brothers, that won't work. But I mean, what right did you have to say to Karzai, President Karzai, don't talk to the Taliban? He was re-elected right. in August 2009, 50% of the vote, and that means that most people would know that he said, let's talk to the Taliban, and they backed that. And we know that opinion polls say a vast majority of Afghan people want Engagement with First the of all, his vote was below 50%, to, to okay, correct more that or less fact. 50%. I know what below happened. The 50%. There was no second yeah. round. There sure. should have been a second round, but sure. the main challenger, Abdullah Abdullah, yeah. withdrew. Fact yeah. of the matter is, he won the election and he is president. And most people knew that part of his platform for the campaign was to talk to the Taliban. And therefore, the Afghan people back him. No. I have not said don't talk. I, d I have said never resort to appeasement policy. Have a plan B. Don't reverse the achievements in order for the enemy to trust you. Don't sever your ties with your key allies in order for the enemy to trust you. Treat them as the enemy. You know, it is very simple logic. While you talk to your enemy, you do not remove your hand from the trigger. That is what Karzai was trying to do without having any gesture from the enemy. He was, as I said, on the verge of destroying the fortress of Afghan pluralism in order to uh, appease the enemy. Who that are was the enemy? Who are the enemy? Because, you know, 30 yeah. million people in Afghanistan, about 40 percent are Pashtuns and they are the ones who make e up the e membership of the Taliban exactly. mostly. So, I mean, uh, there could be an awful lot of people yeah. who sympathize or support yes. the Taliban in Afghanistan. You're going to target all of exactly, them? Exactly, Zainab. I had thought about this. A hundred percent of Al-Qaeda are Arabs, but you are not fighting the Arabs. You are fighting the Al-Qaeda. Even, like, even if the Taliban are predominantly Pashtun, we are not fighting the Pashtuns. The Taliban have committed far bigger atrocities against the Pashtuns than they have done against other ethnic groups in the past 10 years. It's the same. You are fighting Al-Qaeda, the West. Should that be interpreted West fighting Arabs? No. You are fighting a group. But at least they know who to target. And the idea, as you know, President Obama himself has said there's got to be political yeah. engagement. He agrees with Karzai on this. The idea is to try to peel away the more moderate elements, I come back to that, of the Taliban so that they don't support al-Qaeda, they renounce violence, and they abide by the Afghan constitution. That is the Americans' position, and I'm asking you then, what's the matter with that? Because they're not targeting that's exactly, a huge population then, are that's they? A, that's a good thing to do, to peel them off, reintegrate the fighting force, bring back the, uh, the middle circle, which are the mid-level uh, mid commanders, but when you are appealing to their leadership and they, and they respond with more bombings, with more suicide attacks, then that demoralizes the society. I am not against reintegration, and even I am not against talks per se. What I say is, when you talk to your enemy, you do not alienate your friends, you do not spoil your political base. But the point I'm making to you is, who is your enemy? Because I'll Our say to you that well, the, the Taliban enemy, as you call them, have got a great deal of sympathizers and supporters amongst the general Pashtu population and that's implicit in what Obama said in that quote that I gave you that you've got to try to get those it's people a, with nationalist sentiments. It's a, it's a simplistic analysis of the Taliban. I would give my previous example again. Probably Al-Qaeda has sympathizers within the Arab world but you are not fighting the Arab okay. world. That's the same reasoning I would come time and again. Okay. Taliban are enemies of pluralistic society in Afghanistan they receive support from Al-Qaeda, they receive support from Pakistan. So we should not deceive ourselves. Okay, do you think that President Karzai now has a slight change in tack after the assassination of former President Burhaduddin Rabani, who was acting as a mediator trying to talk to the Taliban? He says he's very fed up trying to talk to the Taliban. He says, I don't know, what is their address? How can I talk to suicide bombers? Do you sense that there is a permanent shift 
intact from President Karzai? I hope so. He is coming to my literature. Who you are talking to, you have to have a definition for them. You see, after the assassination of Professor Rabbani, he has to show that he was representing the aspirations of the Afghan people. If he did not show a shift in his policy, the Afghan society would have rebelled against him. Because we are also fed up of this appeasement policy, of this benign overture to those who on daily basis kill our sisters, brothers, and He's not and abandoned, clothes. though. He's not abandoned the policy of talking. He's just simply saying, who am I talking exactly. to? Give me a proper representative exactly. of the Taliban. Give me an address, exactly. was his exact words yeah. on the right. interview in the BBC. But like um, President Karzai, you say that Pakistan provides a great deal of support to the Taliban. And um, in fact, you have publicly blamed the Pakistani government and army for its support of Taliban and, and other extremist groups. You said in June 2010 in the New York Times, the Pakistanis are weakening Karzai under the disguise of respecting him. They will embrace a weak Afghan leader, but they will never respect him. Why do you think Pakistan wants a weak Afghan leader? I was right. They, 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 they showed him respect, but in reality they weakened him. They, uh, they uh, fragmented his political base inside Afghanistan. They uh, 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 tried to damage his relationship with the West and with regional countries. And at the end, their biggest gift for Karzai was assassination of Professor Rabbani. So I was right. Well, you don't know. Nobody's saying well, that uh, Pakistan... Well, sanctioned Karzai that. says. President Karzai himself says it's Pakistan. So I the, the Pakistani Army Chief General Ashfaq Kayani says it is not productive or fair to single out Pakistan. You, are see, you see, I admire that country for being so masterfully deceptive. Why? Until they did the nuclear tests, they were telling you we don't have the bomb. That was their narrative. They say quite clearly, I mean, yes. even the Haqqani network, right. which yeah. is described as an organization that is based in Pakistan that supports the Taliban and even Al-Qaeda, its leader, Siraj Haqqani, has said, we don't get any help from Pakistan. Why he is saying it now? You see, what, because, the, the, kind of, um, because statements the that people like you are making, the perhaps. Pakistanis told him to do that interview. I know, like back of my hand, that the ISI is That's in cahoot. That's the Inter-Services Inter Intelligence, the Pakistani intelligence, intelligence of Pakistan Agency. is in cahoot with Haqqanis. And Haqqanis are operating out of Pakistani soil. But you say that, but the head of the ISI...